deferred loan repayments from the emergency repair program. Um, on the expense side, we're proposing $130,000 for the down payment closing cost assistance grant program. Um, this is no change from 2018. Um, $17,750 in the emergency repair program. This is a slight increase um, and provides deferred loans for emergency repairs um, for income eligible households. $5,000 for housing counseling. This is um, to support pre-purchase counseling that is required by for the down payment closing cost assistance funded by this um, the housing trust fund. Uh, $9,500 administration for the county. This is 5% of the receipts. This is set in, in the ordinance. Uh, $19,000 for redevelopment authority administration. Again, this is 10% of the projected receipts for 2018. Down payment closing cost processing fees, this is $7,000, $200 per closing with approximately 35 closings projected, and $1,775 um, for delivery associated with uh, redevelopment authority costs, 10% um, of the emergency repair program. Um, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board met in late October and approved um, this budget, so I welcome any questions or comments. Just uh, if I could, uh, one of the things that, and I think we discussed it at the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board meeting was, uh, you know, why the, why the revenues, the fee revenues have, have dropped. Right. And well, I think we concluded that it's partly the result of maybe a drop off in, in house refinancings and the reporting of uh, uh, those transactions. Is that, is that, Reason. I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it is um, low inventory. So there are new builds and new sales in the county, uh, but because inventory is low, we're seeing um, fewer closings. Okay. All right. And uh, along those lines, um, you know, one of the things we also, I think, discussed is the fact that a number of the folks who have applied for the first time home buyers program and have been approved for financing or having difficulty actually finding uh, a home to purchase. Right. Um, so this all goes back to that whole issue we've talked about it before of lack of inventory right. uh, in the county. But with respect to the budget, mm -hmm. what happens, you know, do they eventually like if they can't find a home and the, you know they've been approved for five thousand dollars in, in financing? What happens? Does that eventually roll over, or, or uh, you know, how does that impact the, the budget? So, um, once approved for the for the grant, they have six months to find and purchase and settle on a home. If they don't, there's a waiting list mm -hmm. of other additional home buyers. So they would come in and take advantage of that um, that funding. At the end of 2018, whatever has not been either awarded or spent as far as um, a closing rolls over to 2019. Okay. So that could supplement Correct. the funds of the year, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Sure. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda item six, Jack Carroll here to discuss the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services recommendation regarding health choice and single contract, Jack. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. This is an item that uh, Annie and I had a chance to uh, vet with you uh, in, a, in a pretty complete way at a uh, November 7th finance meeting. Uh, this has to do with our uh, regional health choices behavioral health program. As you know, uh, from the start of that program in 2001, we've been teamed up with Dauphin, Lebanon, Lancaster, and Perry counties. They have a five-county collaborative. Uh, at the insistence of the state, however, at the inception of that program, uh, they required separate contracts with each of the counties to allow for the flow of medical assistance funding for medical assistance and substance abuse treatment services. Now, the state has come back and said, you know, that's not that efficient to have five separate contracts and we're all flowing into the same program. And they are recommending that we uh, blend that program into a single contract and run it through the 501c3 nonprofit 
organization that we set up, the Capital Area Behavioral Health Collaborative. That's the group that has uh, board members appointed by each of the five sets of county commissioners. And so um, we've, had, we've taken a look at this. We've had our uh, Health Choices Legal Counsel, uh, Lawrence Davis, take a look at this. And he believes that uh, this would be a good change in the program. It would result in some administrative efficiencies. Rather than tracking five different funding streams, we would just be uh, tracking one. So the reporting and the audit requirements would be simplified. Uh, I think uh, uh, Keith has had a chance to look at this as well, and it seems to make sense. Um, when we discussed this at the finance meeting, uh, the situation was muddied a little bit by a separate proposal that had been put forth that would change the voting structure of CABHC, our uh, five county collaborative uh, corporation. The, uh, since that time, it's become apparent that there are insufficient votes to support that proposal. So there will be no change in the voting structure. Uh, with that in mind, we're comfortable now bringing this forward uh, and recommending that the commissioners uh, uh, indicate their willingness to consider a single contract by <coughs> issuing a letter of intent to the Department of Human Services. Uh, if we move forward with this, it would take place starting with a new contract with the Department of Human Services as of uh, July 1st, 2019, the beginning of our next state fiscal year. Questions? Jen, good morning. 
um, three this morning. Uh, the first one is for Bev Christ, who is our registered nurse. Previously, she her scope of services included just reviewing assessments, but due to the number of additional requests that we continue to receive um, in the department, we had to add her to the list of people that have actually been completed the assessments. So um, she is being paid $100 per assessment that she completes as needed to meet the 15-day requirement by the state. Uh, the second one is for Addis Healthcare. They currently have a contract with us for home care, but requested a contract to provide personal emergency response system, the PERS units. Um, so the con this is a new contract for them for that part of it. Um, and it's, if you line with the other contracts we have, it's $30 per month per landline unit. And the third one is for Cool Waters LLC. They are a personal um, care and home support service that finally got their certificate of insurance to me after about six months of hassling them. Um, so we're just presenting that for approval. Um, next, I'll call on Mrs. Dusty Raymond for children to use. Good morning, commissioners. I'm here to ask for approval for Adult High Village for fiscal year 1819. Um, we use them for in room counseling services. That's our MST, which is funded for perform care or a grant. And then we also use them for group homes, shelter, and institutional placements. They're used by both us and juvenile probation. They're asking for a rate increase for fiscal year 1819 from Either 1.9% to 6.99%, which is $1.63 to $15.46. Um, that high increase on the one of $15 is through the shelter, and we're seeing an increase of all our providers requesting an increase for shelter costs. Um, we don't use Adelphi very heavily. We had three kids last fiscal year at Adelphi Village, and probation had four total, so we don't use it very heavily. John Vittner, who is in that bright orange shirt. What's her? Halloween, uh, <laughs> so it's He wants to make sure he's not mistaken for a piece. <laughs> <laughs> so discuss the grant for vector control. Uh, so the grant for 2019 is the uh, Mosquito Borne Disease Control Grant, formerly known as the West Nile Grant. Total for next year is 101, 14605. That's increased uh, because of. Uh, we uh, have included in the grant the uh, 27,378 for the vehicle purchase that we talked about maybe two weeks <clears throat> And then a little bit of extra money for uh, control products since we had such a busy season this year and uh, some other uh, administrative costs went up, so I included extra money in that to be reimbursed. Any questions for John? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then item 10, Holly will be discussing the renewal recommendation in Dallas County's access for <coughs> compensation insurance policy. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, we are required to have access workers' compensation insurance to the state. Um, it's a requirement of the state because we're self-insured for our workers' compensation. And a couple years ago, years ago we engaged in a two-year contract with Midwest Casualty Company instead of a one-year contract. And so we did go out to the market again the market for carriers who will quote on excess workers' compensation alone is dwindling. Um, so what I'm recommending is renewing with Midwest for another two-year period with a 4% increase, which equates to $8,128 over the two-year period. And these are non-general fund dollars. They are processed through our workers' comp trust fund. Any questions for Holly? Thank you, Holly. Thank you. Agenda item 11, um, Ron Snow will be discussing your request to advertise for bid proposals regarding participation in the purchase of food for Cumberland County Estate Food Purchase Program and Claremont Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. Good morning, Commissioners. We're requesting to advertise a notice to participate in the weekly food bid for the nursing home and for project share through the state food pantry or state food purchase program. This basically gives us a pool of vendors that we can send our food requests out to weekly and then they can bid on it and we purchase from there. Any questions for Ron? Thank you, Ron. 
Uh, agenda item 12 is Claremont Nursing and Rehabilitation Center policy signature updates. These are merely the um, policies, the statement of equal opportunity policy, the admission statement policy, the notice of non-discrimination, and the uh, Claremont Nursing and Rehabilitation Center governing body bylaws. Um, they are presented um, for the change of name from removing C's name as Chief Clerk and in my name so that they remain current. So um, action will be requested on that on Monday. Next is agenda item 13 regarding discussion of capital project requests and upon Lisa Ryder to discuss the capital project request for children and youth. Lisa? Good morning again. Children and youth are requesting two copiers. One of them is to replace a copier lease that has expired in our office. And the second copier is for our expansion up onto the third floor, which is American building. Any questions, Commissioner? Thank you, Lisa. Next, I'd like to call Brad, Brad King to discuss two capital project requests for CNRC as follows. The fire alarm system panels and components replacement and two AC replacement cells. Brad? Morning, Commissioners. Both these projects are in the 2019 budget. Uh, the first project is the fire alarm system. We currently have a simplex system. Uh, we were told uh, a couple of years ago they recommended that we have the panels in place because of the age of the panel. Parts are getting very hard to get uh, and eventually be impossible to get. And uh, we're actually experiencing that right now. We had problems Saturday night. A, a, a board failed, uh, which actually failed back in the summer. It was replaced. So it's been ongoing issues with the system. Uh, in order to replace the panels, we also have to replace all the components. So your smoke detectors, your pull stations, uh, and all that kind of stuff. The only really pr pretty much remains is the wiring and your door holders. We're also, with the new system, we're actually asking, uh, having carbon monoxide detectors installed also that are on the system. Uh, there was a, re a life safety code requirement requiring carbon monoxide detection. Uh, that has to be supervised. We put battery operated ones in for temporarily, uh, but that's always sketchy as what is actually 24 7 supervised. Really, it should be in the panel so that everybody will be alerted if a problem would happen. Uh, it doesn't matter if we go with Simplex or we go with a different brand, same situation, we have to replace all the components. Uh, and we are going to get three bids uh, for this project. Any questions? Okay, the chillers. We want the chillers. Uh, we're recommending to replace the two chiller systems that provides the air conditioning for the majority of the building. Uh, will be sea wing, uh, admin, heritage harbor, kitchen, dining, everything pretty much except for the towers, uh, part of transition in the laundry. Uh, they were installed, I think, somewhere around 2002. Uh, they've been giving us problems the past couple of years, controls failing, the compressors are starting to fail. The Freon that is in these, uh, that serves this unit is R22, which you can't get anymore, or very difficult to get. It's very expensive and will eventually be impossible to get. Uh, like I said, we've replaced a couple compressors the past uh, year or so, and you know, every time we replace them, we're putting this R22 in. So it doesn't really make sense to put the expensive compressors in at some point where we can't get the Freon to serve them. So uh, we recommend we replace these children before they fail. If they would fail, we have no way of supplying temporary cooling uh, to that part of the building. So in this project, it's required piping changes, pump changes. We are actually putting stubs in that in case something would go down in the future, they could bring in portable chillers and hook right into our pipe and we're good to go. So we have a backup plan of something now. Right now, if this would go down in the summertime and it's very hot, we pretty much would be evacuating the building. So, uh, this would be a very definite benefit by the piping change with, with this project. So uh, the project for this is $420,000, pretty good number. We've been working with TRAIN. Uh, they've been working on this uh, for several months um, to get the numbers together. That's why originally when the budget we were a little low, and now we found some things. And this is a pretty good, pr pretty good number. It's prevailing wage. Both these projects were figured on prevailing wage. So, any questions? So this will be cut you. No, I was just going to ask Brad, uh, are we going to be able to have this installed before the summer comes? Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. I want to bring it up. I forgot that. Uh, the reason for the rush is we have to do this in the wintertime before we need cooling. 
because the system's going to be down for, for a couple weeks okay. for them to make the changes. So we can't wait till summer, and of course, if we wait till fall, and we're taking the chance of something happening. So we should have this in place then for the upcoming Correct. That's, that's why the expediency, why we've been doing the legwork ahead of time. That's correct. Good. Thanks. Brad, you said the fire alarm <laughs> system panels will go out to bid. What about the? The AC units, um, they they are CoStar's projects. Um, part of that project also includes the Siemens control system that controls them. We pretty much, we have to stick with Siemens because that's what we already have in the, in the building mod, modulation. So we definitely don't want to go out to Siemens. We've had very good uh, experience with training and really, you know, we're past county projects. So we feel confident that this is the way to go with training. I understand Siemens, but you're going to do the train purchase by customers? Yes. Okay. It's a contract. I have a question for you. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, thank you. Um, next, I'd like to call on John Lott to discuss capital project request for bridge replacement on the Green Building. John? Good, good morning, Commissioners. Um, the Green Building has a metal roof currently, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been experiencing nuisance leaks. Um, and uh, a couple years ago, we coated the whole roof with elastomeric, and uh, it lasted for a few years. But anytime there's traffic on the roof, it creates print holes and stuff like that. So we we had them all repaired uh, within the last couple of months, but we've been monitoring it um, very closely with all the rains, and there's one, another pinhole leak that appeared. So instead of throwing money at this roof, the decision is to um, not replace the metal, but install a rubber roof like we did at Rimmer to over top of the metal. It would be included in insulation. Um, it will be attached to the existing structure, and it will include the, the rubber. And it will be flashed up the walls, up the side walls, up the brick walls, which could be creating a problem also. And uh, um, there's units, there's three units on the top of that roof. They have to be lifted up off the roof to install the rubber. Uh, so we'll be using jacks and stuff to get those out. The spouting will also be, need to be removed. So we're going to replace that in addition to the rubber roof, which is normally what you do if you have bad spouting. And uh, um, that will also be replaced and this is a going bridge project. Any questions for John? John, what is the approximate square footage? When I was walking down here, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> when I was up on the roof the other day, um, we were looking at it and the questions were asked. I was up on the roof with Sendak and we're measuring square footage right now because they changed because of the how high we're going to run that on up, up the sides. And I am going to be contacting some of the neighbors, like Steve Tiley and some of those, to let them know that we're doing that. I will definitely email you with that exact square footage once we get the final, once we figure out exactly how high the wall, the wall we can run that. Any other questions? Uh, what's the life expectancy of the, of the rubber? This will be a 20 year. 20 year. Yeah. You have an option 15 or 20, then we'll probably go 20.
budget does not include any special projects for 2019 conditional grant projects. Uh, the library board will need to amend the budget once these projects are approved. I believe they are coming in front of us in December of financing meeting to present what they have. Uh, some other highlights <coughs> regarding the national change of address run on Sierra data. Approximately 15,000 of the 105,000 records were updated. This required special training to be able to import the data back into Sierra. NCOA will run at least two times annually. It is to run four times annually on our e tapestry Center database. Caller ID display has been edited. There were some customer comments and complaints on missed calls from our automated notification system. The new ID, the new phone number on the call, caller ID will actually be an uh, automated attendant number at the library system. Legislative breakfast, as you all know, we attended. It was reported to be a good success. Uh, two grants were submitted by the Cumberland County Library System, check for $5,000 arrived to support the service to adult readers, otherwise known as STAR. And Baltimore Life presented a check in the amount of $500 to Jerry Kelterman and Kate Purcell to support teen services at the Cumberland Library. Staff Development Day, the headquarters staff along with staff from member libraries coordinated a Staff Development Day which was held earlier this month. 146 staff members were in attendance and those who attended all day earned 5.2 hours of continuing education. And that is it for me. Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome. Commissioner Hartzler. Okay. Thanks, Sandy. I think that uh, Commissioner Eichelberger and I uh, reported previously on the uh, meeting of the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, but um, I, I have noticed that uh, since that, that the, the number one priority for the County Commissioners Association as we head into this new uh, legislative term in January is going to be funding, funding for uh, the election machine mandate. And I know that there's uh, conversations that are supposed to be taking place uh, with the administration as the governor uh, prepares to submit his uh, budget for the uh, fiscal year. Uh, the Housing Redevelopment Authority boards met Thursday, November 15, uh, at around noontime. If you recall, that was the day that we got the surprise snowstorm. And uh, as the snow was coming down, uh, the Housing Redevelopment Authorities were at a quorum and were meeting. And, Anyway, they're pulling from the uh, wait list for the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Uh, 1,204 units are leased. Uh, there's room in the program for, for additional units to be leased. Uh, the authority is working with Monarch Development on two low-income housing tax credit project applications. Uh, one for 40 units of senior housing in Le Moyne and another potential project for multifamily housing in Hamden Township. And there was a quarterly update on the authority's uh, strategic plan, and that's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Interesting handful of items that we have touched on already. The uh, you know, HID meeting was canceled last week uh, due to the weather. So while some folks were willing to show up for meetings, the other organization decided to uh, be a little so uh, I think the Perry County folks didn't want to come over the mountain. So uh, I do not blame them I made that drive. So. Uh, yeah. um, I kind of thought that the, the Housing Redevelopment Authority would have canceled their meeting. Yeah, uh, that's right. They, they <laughs> were probably uh, alone uh, in terms of meetings. So. Um, uh, real quick, the, uh, other, the, even though that meeting was canceled, the next meeting is in January, but I did want to pass along that uh, Annie's report mentioned that the end of the year with on the I'm sorry, Sue Carver's report on the IDP side, they did end the year with some um, excess funding that was unallocated in. And just as a reminder, under the block grant, they're allowed to keep a certain percentage of that uh, with the state's approval and redeploy those. And that apparently uh, uh, they were able to put that to, to 
a good use this year. Um, I think she said fifty-four thousand dollars that they've uh, applied to the state to redeploy to uh, some new programming. And uh, uh, I, I haven't heard an update from her on whether that was approved or not. But generally, those things are you know, pretty well schooled. Well, get approved on all So uh, it sounds like a success story in terms of uh, how our resources get allocated just so I can pass that along. Uh, only other thing was the I was the Libraries Futures Task Force met this week and I was unable to attend, but I did supply Carolyn with a, a pretty detailed um, summary of some of the things that, that as you know the Futures Task Force is, is newly formed and um, I did provide her with an overview of some of the uh, other similar groups that I've worked with and how they operate some very positive feedback on that, but what more report is that as that rolls out. Of course, the idea there is to incorporate more forward-looking planning into our planning process by anticipating changes in the, uh, in the uh, social, economic uh, landscape so that they can kind of build that in. It's in alignment with our interest in building the library of the future will be increasingly relevant in the digital Be sure 
you know, we've had our differences, and it would not be right if we did not have our differences. Uh, but as we have demonstrated, I think we've been able to compartmentalize those very few areas where we just can't agree. Um, but we've demonstrated that, uh, for the most part, and I think it's reflected in the record, that we agree much more than we disagree. And where we have differences, we have compromised to get things done. Uh, I'm particularly proud of this board's unanimous advocacy for congressional and legislative redistricting reform uh, to eliminate the practice of partisan gerrymandering of uh, legislative and congressional districts in favor of one party or politician over another. Together, we've taken a strong stand in support of still uh, unrealized federal and state action uh, for much needed capacity expansion on the major artery in our, in our county, Interstate 81, to three lanes in both directions, the whole way from I-78 to the Maryland border. We continue to fight as a United Board as advocates for a customer-friendly 21st century public transit system that provides better service at a lower cost via transit agency administration consolidation. And these are all big things, and not just Cumberland County things, that remain undone, but I'm hopeful that we can help to steer uh, these issues towards substantive action in the year ahead and before my current uh, term expires. As for accomplishments, I'm glad that I was able to play a part in uh, spearheading the elimination of the near automatic, unnecessary, and costly once every four year practice of countywide uh, property reassessments and reforming the assessment appeals process to better assist agreed taxpayers and to ensure that the Board of Assessment Appeals uh, acts independently of the Board of Commissioners, the taxing body. As a side, though, I remain uh, deeply disappointed uh, by the session after session failure of our State General Assembly uh, to finally enact meaningful property tax reform. Reform that would grant counties an alternative and fairer revenue options for the sole purpose of dollar for dollar reductions in the inequitable homeowner property tax. I'm proud that as a board we have been able to balance our county's economic growth with deliberate action to preserve uh, more of our rich farm acreage before it's lost forever, and to protect our county's quality of life. I'm proud of the successful United effort that this board waged uh, in conjunction with many citizens of our county uh, to prevent the condemnation of the historic performing uh, uh, farm in Silver Spring Township. I'm proud of my advocacy for and the implementation of intergenerational uh, programs at our libraries uh, where our young people can learn from the life experiences of our older citizens and our kids can teach a thing or two to our seniors. I'm glad that we instituted it on my recommendation fair free shared ride service for our seniors who no longer drive to get to and from their local library. And I'm proud of my role in helping to save the Shippensburg Seniors Activity Center, which was relocated to a newly renovated building now known as Branch Creek Place, right next to the borough building in Shippensburg. And I'm proud of my 35 years of standing tall for the public's right to know, uh, to ensure that we are abiding by the state's sunshine law, and of my advocacy for the video streaming and recording of our uh, county commissioners' meetings so that anybody who's interested out there um, can stay informed by simply visiting our county website at ccpa.net. As we approach a new, new year, meanwhile, um, as we talked about it this morning, I'm particularly glad that we're able to hold the line on county taxes um, for a fifth straight year uh, with the pending 2019 budget. Uh, although there are challenges ahead, we're in much better financial shape uh, than when I walked in the door in 2012, and we continue to enjoy a AAA bond rating and the lowest county property tax of, of any county in the region. And last but not least, uh, I'm encouraged to note uh, that the opioid drug deaths in our county 
uh, while still rising elsewhere, are going down here. Uh, the good news is that while one death is still one too many, our county has seen a 37% reduction this year in the number of opioid deaths compared to this time last year. According to Charlie Hall, who I spoke to just the other day, it's 48 deaths so far this year compared to 76 at this time last year. Uh, in addition to everything else we're doing to address this public health emergency of our time, uh, it appears that our implementation and cooperation with our courts of a first of a kind in Pennsylvania opioid intervention court uh, is making a big difference. And to me, that's what it's always been about, trying to make a positive difference, trying to do the right thing without regard to politics. Um, there's an inscription on the finance building uh, where I happen to work for over 30 years in the state senate. Um, and <clears throat> at, at the Capitol complex down there, it, it, and it reads, all public services of trust given in faith and accepted in honor. Uh, as I look to more fully explore other interests after my uh, current term expires at the end of 2019, although I expect to stay active in uh, public affairs. In fact, you guys may see me back there from time to time. I thank the people of Cumberland County the honor. So, uh, one more year to go. <laughs> Thanks for the time. Thanks for your indulgence. It's okay, Jim. Uh, Jim told me about his decision earlier today, and the selfish part of me said I was very disappointed. Because uh, this board has really worked well together. And I'm glad you'll be here another year. Understand your reasoning. I mean, you served the public a lot of years. So, I just very briefly thank you for what you've done for the county and your township in the past. I look forward to you being here another year with us. Absolutely. And just thank you. Thank you. I'll have a comment. But we'll have one more set of from now. We give you your send off. <laughs> We'll see. Maybe, maybe the rest of us will have a son. But I, I, I just want to add that I, I do want to extend my deep appreciation to every, every county uh, employee. Um, you know, because uh, whatever you know, brainstorms we come up with, um, it's you folks that make it happen. So thank you. Thank you. Is there any other business to bring before the board today? Okay, hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.